Hi all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. On today's episode, we're gonna push this MaxSpec Jump Gaia 4K to its limits and see what it can do. All right, so a little while ago, you would have noticed I did an unboxing in the full MaxSpec Jump range, and I did promise that I'd do a follow-up video on each and every one of those products, and today's the lucky day for this Gaia. And I say lucky day because we are 24 hours from this tank coming down, and this is the size of tank I really wanted to test a flow pump like this out on. I have run two of the MaxSpec gyres on this tank before, one at each end, but currently there is no flow on this tank whatsoever, other than just a little return pump running at about 3,000 liters per hour. So. The poor fish in there, it's uh, very, very uh, stale waters for them at the moment. Don't worry, the tank is got, uh, getting water changes and it does have a skimmer running, but um, there's no flow in there whatsoever and the fish are all a little bit confused and um, the detritus coming off my rockscape as we're pulling it out is just settling. So I'm expecting some pretty dramatic results from this MaxSpec Jump guy when we set it up. It should, we really should see a good uh, detritus storm once it uh, gets running, but um, I figured we'll just unbox it. We'll chuck this uh, pump on the tank and just see what it does. Then we can dive a little bit deeper into the um, into the settings to see if we can really dial in a nice little uh, nice little program that's suitable. But um, I guess we just start off by opening up the box, chucking the pump in there, feeding it some power, and see what happens. All right, now we did do a little bit of an unboxing of this in the um, overall range, but I'll uh, open it up and show you what you get. We get a nice uh, glossy instruction manual. We get uh, the Gaia itself with some uh, taping attached to it, but uh, it's pre-installed with the bright orange rotors. Now, traditionally, I would probably switch them over to these extra included black rotors because I don't really want to see the orange, but um, for the purpose of this uh, review, it might be cool to see the rotors in action. So I'll leave the orange ones in there. But yes, you do get a full set of spare black rotors. We get this really nifty looking controller, which is um, something that's very, very different from what MaxSpec Guy as I've used before, so I'm keen to see how that goes. And just for uh, purpose, for those who love doing it, I'm going to remove the pr protective film because um, things always look better with the film removed and it's super satisfying pulling that off. And of course we get a um, power supply. Not to mention, oh yeah, we've already touched on the instructions. We get a power supply. So I say we uh, whack this uh, pump into the tank. We'll get that bit of foam out between the magnets. We'll get that in one end of the tank. We'll hook up the power. We'll plug in the controller and um, see what it does. Alright, now I've got to plug the uh, pump motor into the uh, three pin connector. It does have a nice little uh, locating flat side, which should make that easy. And then it has a little locking screw to make sure that doesn't come out. Okay, and then of course, uh, get this chair out of the way because we don't need that. We'll uh, plug the power in and uh, see what she does. Ooh, the display is backlit, that's nice. All right, the pump is switched on. You can tell because we've got a little bit of bubble blowing there. And uh, we're pushing detritus around the base of the tank despite only being on 80% power. Okay, cool. So we've got different modes here. So we're gonna go uh, big pulse, small pulse, big pulse. I want that one to run at 100%. All right, we've got a pulsing between 10% and 100%, a few clicks, and um, I must admit, whilst it wasn't the most user-intuitive thing without reading any part of the instructions at all, it still actually wasn't that hard. It took me maybe about two to three minutes to work out a pattern that um, would probably work. Now, you can hear a very, very subtle whir as it revs up from 10% to 100%, but it's very, very quiet. Bearing in mind that this is just about the only equipment running on this tank at the moment, so any noise it makes is gonna be um, more noticeable than if there was uh, other return pumps running. And you can see we're getting a nice little uh, detritus haze in there, which... And you can also see the vortex we're pulling down from the top, which is a good indicator of just how much flow this thing's pulling, despite being so quiet. I'll bring the camera in so you get a bit of a closer look and um, see if you're as impressed as I am. All right, so excuse the uh, messy tank, but in reality, it's a pretty good example for um, 
at Flowpoint. We can see the amount of detritus coming around. Now, at the moment, I am a good, oh, probably three, three and a half inches from the surface, and you can see we're pulling a vortex in there. That's pretty crazy. Now, I have not tried adjusting the um, angle of the uh, cases or the housings at all, but to have a look at the detritus getting stirred up. Now, like I said, the tank is quite dirty at the moment because it has had all of its uh, rock removed and um, the detritus has sort of just been able to settle there without other flow pumps. But um, you can even see this bit of PVC. Oh, it was just moving before I got the camera on it. There it goes, it's starting to get blown around. Now, this is one jump 4,000, which is amazing flow. It is moving a little bit of sand around, nothing too drastic, I must admit, but um, you gotta bear in mind that the tank, it does have a little bit of rock work in there, not a lot, so it's it typically, uh, we've got a fair pile up this end, but um, typically, oh, there goes that PVC, just a good example of the flow on it, and the little turbo snails holding off the deer life. If you did have a bit more rock work in your tank, it's obviously gonna disrupt the flow a little bit, but, um, whoa, that vortex just about pulled its way all the way down to the pump then. I'm curious to uh, change the position of that pump and just see um, how much surface disruption we can get. I might even flip it upside down because it looks like at the moment it's pulling in from the top and pushing it down the bottom. I wouldn't mind flipping it over so we can see, um, I could try reversing it on the controller, but. For um, a quick example, I'm just gonna flick uh, the pump over so that we're pushing out the top and sucking in from the bottom and uh, see what sort of surface disruption we can get. All right, here we go. You can see the big backlit uh, controller, super easy to read. I'm going to uh, one-handedly press the uh, power button on there. We've got the same setting of the 10% to 100% pulse. And uh, this gives a better representation of the type of power this guy is putting out because um, you can see that surface disruption all the way along. Like I said, this could actually have been achieved by on the controller changing the flow, changing the direction the rotors ran. But um, I don't know, for this purpose, it was good to give a like for like comparison just by flipping the uh, pump over having the cable exit this side of the pump rather than on the other side. And you can see that beautiful surface disruption that uh, the guys are well known to provide. Very difficult to achieve this with other pumps um, without creating sort of really weird splashes. Now that flow should, being a guyer, come all the way along the surface, hit this wall here, come down, and then come back along here. So we'll see if we can see any sort of sand movement. See a little bit of detritus moving around here. Oh, there's some there. So it does create that beautiful gyre flow where you really get the top hitting the walls, coming down and then coming back along the bottom, all the way back up and then feeding into this pump here. Now, like I said, bear in mind, this is only one gyre 4,000 pump and um, that's what I'd classify more than adequate surface disruption. And we are a long way down from the um, surface with that pump. That level of surface disruption is gonna give fantastic oxygen exchange really help uh, stir up the detritus off your bottom of the tank, get it up into your weir so that uh, your mechanical filtration and your skimmer can pull it out. See my hogfish is uh, pretty interested by the pump as well. He's always curious by different things. I'll get in nice and close so you see if you can hear the pump. There's a tiny whir there, but realistically, it's not very noisy at all. Like I said, there is not another piece of equipment running on this tank at the moment. And I think with the black rotors in over the orange rotors, that it's gonna be quite easy to hide, particularly if um, it doesn't stick out too far there. The side exit cable has me a little worried. This tank is a six by two and a half by two foot tank. So we're talking a very large tank here to have one gyre in there as its only flow. And um, if I came to have a look at this tank, I wouldn't say from that that there wasn't enough flow. Um, I've seen tanks run with significantly less flow than this and keep SPS more than happy. Now, again, as soon as there's a bit more rock work in there and some corals are grown in, that may change a little bit. The flow is gonna be um, 
impede it a bit more, but uh, for starting a tank off or for uh, adding a bit of surface disruption that you didn't have before, that's a hectic amount of flow. All right, now if you're curious, you can see the uh, controller itself doesn't have the backlight on the whole time. As soon as you touch it though, the backlight does come on. And hopefully you'll be able to see on screen just how clear and easy that is to read. That's, um, that's, that's nice. Now, I figured we should probably have a look at the instructions and see what they can tell us about the different modes. We've got a uh, setup mode button, a switch mode button, the control dial. Um, we can hold this on for three seconds. That will actually turn the unit off as opposed to the feed mode that I did where I just pressed it. Hold that down for three seconds again. Turns the unit back on and should remember the setting it was on, which it does instantly. Look at that flow go, nice. All right, now you can switch between the auto mode and the manual mode by holding this one for three seconds. So we're on a manual mode at the moment. Now we're over to auto mode. Now what auto mode does is it allows us to build in a 24 hour cycle, which is pretty crazy. A lot more programmability than I would expect, to be honest. Um, I tend to just have one setting and let it go, but if you wanted to, you can set the time, then you enter the mode you want, uh, set up your parameters, rotate the value, and off you go. So I guess it allows you to set different modes for different parts of the day. To be honest, I'm not gonna use that feature, so I'm gonna switch back over to manual. And that goes back to the mode that it was in before, which was this, uh, this fast pulse here, pulsing mode. Okay, cool, and that literally just goes between a minimum value and a high value. Now, if we wanna go back into setup mode, we, hold, we press that. Okay, now these flash. So, let's have a look. We can press the center button to switch between the modes. So we've got a constant speed mode, a pulsing mode, a gradual pulsing mode, a random mode, and an alternating gyre mode. All pretty cool. Then each of these little things here, this means uh, the down one is minimum flow. The one that's flashing now is maximum flow. We've got uh, the ramp up time here. We've got the ramp down time here. We've got the minimum flow time and that'll be the maximum flow time. The logo sort of makes sense. I guess <laughs> if you're not sure what you're looking at, it's not gonna make a lot of sense, but um, oh, you can see it does just time out from um, so if you are taking your time making the settings, it will just time out and set that. So it's gone to an 80% mode flat out now, which um, is quite a lot of flow. I'm gonna press that again. All right, let's... Uh... All right, there's our alternating gyre mode. I wanna set that to be minus 100. Four seconds, four seconds, plus 100, four seconds, four seconds. We're good. Let's press that and see if that's the mode we enter. Rock and roll, look at that. So it takes four seconds to go from the minimum setting to the maximum setting. It'll hold it there for four seconds, take four seconds to come down. Now it's gonna go in the opposite mode. Whoa, which moves some water around. Wow, alternating gyre mode, that is something different. So I guess if you're looking to use these gyres for something a little bit more than just surface disruption, they have the ability to do it. Like I said, I'm still a big fan of just that sort of pulsing mode, disrupting the surface and creating that gyre around the tank. But you've got the capabilities here with a pretty easy to use controller to get the job done. I'm gonna go back to my favorite mode, which is this one. And we're gonna, oh, actually it's not the mode I want. I like this mode, which is pulsing mode. I wanted to go from 100%, take 0.4 of a second. Sure. Off we go. Now that should go back into my manual mode of pulsing between 10% and 100% and pulsing every 0.4 of a second, which creates a beautiful GI for me. But you've got all sorts of different uh, configuration variabilities here, which if you really want to go into a lot of depth, you absolutely can with this max spec gyre jump. All right, I just noticed before that uh, the display looked kind of hard to read with um, the camera angle. So I thought I'd get a different camera angle for you to see that it is super, super clear. All right, now one of the other things I had a few questions about when uh, 
asking you guys, the users or the viewers, what you wanted to see on this pump, one of the things that came up a lot was the serviceability of it. Now, I'm excited to say that to pull this unit apart, all you need to do is just twist that, out comes your rotor. Easy as that. Now, we've got these uh, accessory packs here, or the other rotors, so if I wanted to put the black rotor in, now this says it's the B side, I believe. So this is indicated by, I'm not sure how well you can see it on camera there. I'll try and get it so you can see. You might just be able to see there a B. So we've got to find the B rotor. So we've got the B rotor and uh, we just push him back in there. Put the uh, B side covering back on. Line it up to wherever you want on your angles and you're done. That's how easy it is to pull apart the new gyre range, which is a huge improvement over having to mess about with uh, the, the magnet things here, which had clips coming out here. It was a real pain and I always felt like I was gonna break the other gyres. So I'm really happy to say that um, these are much easier to pull apart. Switch out your, uh, your blades, pop new blades in, line them back up, and our job done. Pretty nifty. Um, while we've got the unit here, I also wanna show you the cool magnetic mount. It's got a nice little bit of um, play in there. So should you have any sort of vibrations or anything, that rubber there is gonna take that up. Um, it is fairly flexible, but uh, I'm pretty sure I got some footage of the unit running before and you only occasionally see it wiggle a little bit. Uh, some of the other accessories we get are also the, um, the protective sleeves, which are kind of awkward to handle on camera, but I'll do my best. And they just slip them over the end. As easy as that. <laughs> there we go. It's just kind of like a um, orange, uh, if you're familiar with um, orange bag nets, they're just like that. They just slide over the end and you actually get uh, four of them. So you've got, you get enough to have a pair on the unit and a pair cleaning because these I would imagine would fill up with detritus quite quickly. You also get, whether you need it or not, a couple of little screws to match your controller with, which, you know, is a nice addition. All right, guys, there you have it. The MaxSpec Jump Gyre 4K. Now, this pump is already out on the market. It's going for about $380 Australian. They do have the 2K version, which is only about, from what I've seen anyway, about 20 bucks cheaper. So if you've got the room, go the 4K. It's a big, beefy pump. Now, there's a few things I love about it, a couple of things I don't love about it. Um, the things I love is that controller. The controller is so easy to read. Um, simplistic buttons on it. Um, it's easy to see where it's at. The backlighting is bright and clear. Super, super nice. Com particularly compared to my uh, previous model MaxSpec Gyres where I've got this little uh, color display which um, over time some of the dots have dropped out and I can't really see what it's doing. I just keep pressing buttons till I get it to pump somewhere where I'm happy and um, all good from there. So the controller is a big, big step forward in my opinion. The next thing I love about this pump is the flow it puts out for a $380 Gyre. This thing pumps out a heap of flow. Um, now, you can set that up however you like, but the way I like gyres to flow is to create that surface disruption along the top of the water, hit the end wall, come back down and suck it up. And this gyre 4K does that very, very nicely. It does it very quietly. Um, only real way I could tell that it was on when it was in the other direction, because I couldn't see the surface disruption, was by the amount of detritus floating through the water. Once I flipped it over and had it pumping so that the output came along the surface of the water, it was very, very obvious it was on despite being very little, if any, sound at all. Okay, the next thing I love, and it's been an absolute bugbear of mine with Max, well, I was gonna say with MaxSpec gyres, but with gyres, full stop, is the servicing of them. They've been traditionally very, very fiddly things to service. Now, as you saw in the footage here, pulling off the end caps and uh, replacing the rotor looks dead simple. I'd be surprised if you even need to remove the unit from the tank at all, which, I know it's only a magnet, so you can lift it out, pull the end caps off, take those rotors off. If you wanted to, you could even switch in, I don't like the orange rotors, but you could switch them in as temporary rotors while you're cleaning the black ones, give them a clean, and then either a couple of hours later or even a couple of days later, pop the black ones back in. The way they've made them super easy to um, maintain is a huge, huge win in my books. All right, now to remain as unbiased as possible, I always like to find a couple of things that I personally didn't like. First thing I didn't like in uh, the MaxSpec Jump Gaia range was the instruction manual. Now, I know it's a little hypocritical. I normally don't even bother looking at instruction manuals, but once I found out that this unit has a 24 hour cycle, I was curious to know how I go, how I go about setting that up. Now, I had a look at the instruction manual, it was pretty light on, so I had to go online and have a look how I go about setting up different settings for that 24 hour cycle, which is a little bit of a shame. Um, 
It's obviously not a deal breaker. Once you've set that up once, you're probably unlikely to fiddle with it all that much in future, but another page of instructions there walking you through how to set that up wouldn't have gone astray. Okay, the next thing I'm not a huge fan of is the orange rotors. I know it comes with black rotors in the kit, so it's probably unfair to pick on the orange rotors. And if anything, it might be a handy reminder that you've got your backup rotors in the pump, so you know that um, the ones you've got sitting in a citric acid somewhere shouldn't be out there for too long. But uh, the orange rotors, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where you would want to put orange rotors that are super high vis and visible in your tank. Sorry guys, one more thing I nearly forgot and it was asked in the comments when I did the unboxing. The jump controller only has room for one pump. So if you want to run two pumps, you can't buy a twin kit. You're going to need to buy two separate pumps and have two controllers. All right, guys, there you have it. That's my final review on the MaxSpec Jump Gyre 4K. Let me know what you think about it. I've still got this pump here, so if you've got any questions about it, feel free to pop them in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to get onto it and see if I can work out those questions for you. If you've got any um, feedback at all about the channel or about the video, pop them in the comment section down as well. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. And as always, if you're yet to, please consider subscribing. There should be a little button down there in the corner. Click that, it'll take two seconds of your time, question no money, it goes a long way to helping me out on this channel. That's about all I've got time for, guys. Uh, in the meantime, stay safe and uh, keep reefing. Cheers. Bye.